All right, welcome back to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. I'm Rich Walsh alongside Paul Zeiss, and we're taking your phone calls tonight on the Bordis and Bordis Hotline. If you need a roof, make sure you call Ireland Contracting. They're the best in the business. 1 800 New Roof. That's why they're number one in Pittsburgh. Roofing, gutter, sidings, anything you need, give them a call. Ireland Contracting, 1 800 New Roof. Give us a call right now. 412 575 26. Zero, zero. You were on a roll there, Paul, before we had to go to break. But, yeah, I would like to continue that conversation. I would like to see the Pirates mortgage the future, but that's not the, the kind of business they do. Yeah, and I thought CBS Sports, uh, did, you, did you read that story yeah, today? Very good. It was an excellent story right. um, by CBS Sports, and it really outlined and really put things into perspective of, of – where the pirates are, like you might think, like oh, they they had their payroll was here or there, and you don't even realize that they've been in the bottom five more than they've been anywhere else for yeah. the last twenty years. Right, right, and that, and that's you know to me, I, I don't like, I hate the word mortgage the future because I think it's a it's it's a made up phrase by general managers who or or owners who don't want to trade young guys. Yeah, there's no such thing as mortgaging your future. That's silly. Um, you know, and, and, and the idea that trading a prospect or two is mortgaging your, your, your future is dumb. I mean, you look what the Pirates did at the, at the trade deadline. They gave up some prospects to get, yeah, two to good get ones. Archer and Keller, right? Yeah, or three good ones, actually, okay. yeah. Is there, is there a farm system depleted? Well, it's good, but still, I mean, the, the Major League Baseball team, the, the team that they put on the field at PNC Park is a much better team right now right but my point is they have other prospects yes they do they'll, they'll develop other prospects they'll get other they'll pro draft other prospects and you know what they'll probably do some things this year if they don't you know if they don't win say they're you know swimming along again at the, at the trade deadline they'll trade Corey Dickerson and get a prospect for him maybe yeah and, and they'll trade for Cervelli not great prospects but they'll get something back and that's the game that they play it's they're, they're, they're not going to mortgage their future to the point where they don't have prospects that they can, you know, turn to every year. The one thing that I forget this, real, this, this story really opened my eyes to is the fact of what they don't do in free agency. You know, they don't even get a, a middle-tier guy. No. It, they get nobody, and that's been a trend since McClatchy. You know, I had, I had a, a Neil Huntington apologist guy. A fan, yeah, I, I had one of those. Fan arguing with me, you know, that Lonnie Chisenhall was a significant – Free agent I think he's ranked 42nd out of all the free agents. Now, how many free agents are there? 43? <laughs> I don't know, but he. he My he, point he, is. Yeah, I, I mean, understand. There was 40 other. They got him for four agents. million bucks or whatever. Give me a break. Wait, all right, please. let's head out to the phone lines. Let's go out to Barry out in Charleroi. How you doing, Barry? What's going on? Uh, hi, Rich. Hi, Paul. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Thanks for coming. Uh, warm me up with a little bit of talk about the Pirates here uh, as they get ready to start spring training next. Yeah, I'll week. be there, uh, February 13th through the 20th. So. I'm sure it'll be wonderful weather. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, I, since you were talking about Corey Dickerson, uh, I've heard talk that he may be jumbling around positions in the outfield, and I was wondering, uh, you know, what you thought about that, if uh, that was actually really going to happen, that he might change up positions, not just be in one place, uh, whatever they would need him. You know what? Um, I, I could see that being a real possibility. Uh, I'll find out more during spring training, and we'll see more during spring training. Uh, Paul, but I mean, they look for position flexibility like all these teams, and especially teams that are in the Pirates position. And that's one of the reasons I wouldn't mind them bringing in a guy like Billy Hamilton because you could move Marte to left, Billy Hamilton in center, and Corey Dickerson in right. And, and you have, you, if Corey Dickerson can play both outfield positions, you're bet, the, uh, the corner positions, you're better off. I, I'm not sure why you do that. The guy won the gold glove last year. I, I get that, was, but I, I think. Mean, he won the gold glove in left field, which is the hardest position to play at PNC Park. There's no question about you've it. You've got a center fielder, and when Polanco's back, you've got a guy when you, who you can't play anywhere else because he stinks. So why would you move Corey Dickerson around? I'm only saying that position flexibility. <laughs> I understand I, I don't, that, I, but my point is it makes no sense in the outfield. Well, he might be better suited for right field. Okay, then where do you put Polanco? At? Well, no, I'm just saying if you had a guy like Billy Hamilton, uh, if you had you another really saying. good outfielder. You know, if you, you want know? to tell me early on when Polanco's out, if they want to use Chisholm on left and move uh, Dickerson to right a little bit. But to me, you got a guy, you brought him in, he really fits well in your left field. He's been a really good defensive player. No, a lot he, of gold glove. He's, his gold glove, I think, is a little overblown, but yeah, whatever. He did a good job in left field in a tough place to play left field. Leave him there and leave right. Marte there and then, you know, mess around with Fraser and, you know, all the other guys are going to use in right field until Polanco gets back. Let's go out to John in Banksville. What's up, John? Hi, guys. How you doing? Hey, thanks for calling. Uh, I want to talk about the trade. Okay. Um, 
First, I think it's a really good trade. I think this uh, Bugstad guy is going to be good. I, I really can't see your point about you wishing you, that they'd give Broussard more time. They gave him two years, and he still hasn't adjusted to the team. Well, he hasn't even been with the Penguins for a year, John. Well, well he, he was traded at the year, end of February. He played February. quite a bit, and then all yeah. year he didn't He play was well. hurt a plus lot, too. A, plus, he's a free agent uh, next year, too. I, so. I get that. I mean, I, I would have liked to have seen him. Um, uh, thanks a lot, John. I appreciate it. Not trade him. I was saying maybe give him more time to get a little hot, get on a roll. Uh, he has the pedigree, and then maybe you could have gotten more for him closer to the trade deadline. But I know Jim Rutherford likes to pull, likes yeah. to pull the trigger I think, yeah. a lot earlier right. than trade deadline. And I think the other thing is, I think, you know, the, the, the fact that he's on an expiring contract. Well, yeah. They wanted yeah. to make sure they got something, something for, him, for him. Just like Shaheen, you know. Um, you know, I, I, I'm okay with what they did. I, I, I don't have a problem. I understand what you're saying, that you hope that he – but he never it – did, it, did, it didn't happen. No. And I think they got a pretty good return for him, so – but, but Mike Sullivan is a lot like Bill Belichick. They're stubborn coaches. They want to do things their right. way. And they want guys that do things their way. Yeah, so that's why the whole Phil Kessel with Genny Malkin, they want to play together, but he's reluctant to do that. And that's why there's that little, little bit of friction there. Right. Um, but, you know, maybe fit him into spots where you see his productivity, where his value goes up instead of where it's probably try, at yeah, its all-time lowest now. They did try him now. in a couple of different places. He just, it just, it just didn't work. Sometimes it's get just it. not going to work. I think I wanted it to work more than it, right. it working. All right, we're going to take a break. Back with more of your phone calls, some of your tweets coming up next. Stay right there.